Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is actually a finishing video. So I already recorded this and I'm doing a voiceover. So I tried to get everything out that I was going to need. Of course, I forgot some stuff because finishing is never truly seamless, at least not for me. The very first thing I always do is I will iron the fabric. So I have one of these really great double-sided where it's like a cutting mat on one side and an ironing pad on the other. I always iron it from the back and I will spritz water around the outside of the fabric because I feel like it helps to get the hoop marks and creases out better. You'll see it. It does a pretty good job of getting it out of there. I have a cordless iron. If I remember, I will link all of the stuff in the description box. I really love the cordless iron. I got it. It's a Black & Decker. I got it on Amazon. I want to say it was like 60 bucks. It sits on a chargeable base. It's really fantastic not to be tethered to cords. So I'm just ironing all around, getting all those hoop marks out. Someone had said that they... Those hoops that I use, um, they leave brown marks on their fabric. I've never had that problem, thankfully. So the ironing is done. And I think I'm going to cut it next is what I do. So I try to do an inch all the way around because I like a quarter inch margin around my fabric, around the stitched part, and then that gives me a half inch well, it gives me three quarters of an inch to go around um, the back. And I might actually start cutting it a quarter inch shorter because the more fabric you have on the back, the bulkier it's going to be. So you're really trying to, you know, have as less bulk on the back as you can. So um, this was, this piece was the Halloween wreath, I think from the Primer's Cottage Stitches book. So I use a rotary cutter and I have one of those measuring things where the lip will catch on the edge of something so it's sturdy for you. And I'm just going around and cutting the fabric. Now I turn on the light. I didn't have a light on right here because sometimes it gives a glare, but I turn the light on a little bit later and you can just see a whole lot better. As you can tell, this video, this finishing almost took me an hour. It took me like 50 minutes to do it. It's not quick. I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I feel like I will get better and better as I go along. I think I've done pretty good. Um, you'll see later on, I still have a problem making bows. I mm, That's going to take me some time to figure that out. I probably need to sit and practice or when I go to do a bow like I probably should have done it off camera um, so I could really take my time and do it. You'll see I wound up using a bow that I had someone had made me so you'll see at the end it worked out though it looks really good. I don't remember what step is next what I'm doing. Oh, I'm probably going to get the piece around the mat board. So I use the chipboard sheets. I will link them down below from Amazon. They are thinner than the sticky board. So now I'm measuring because I need to know what to cut my chipboard to. And I'm pretty sure it's three by three. So I add a quarter inch then. I, I cut the mat board to three and a half by three and a half. So you're gonna see, I'm just measuring that out. I just use a regular tape measure and a pencil to make a little line so I know where to cut. And I'm very fortunate to have all the tools to cut. Now this cutter is my favorite. This is a pretty Heavy duty cutter from Fiskars. This one cost me 60 bucks on Amazon. Like I said, I'll if I remember, I'll link it down below. It will cut through heavy card stock with no problem. My regular paper cutter would never be able to do it. 
And so then I'm just going to measure the other side, make a pencil mark. Yeah, finishing is definitely not for the faint of heart because I like to have mine perfect and it's hard to get it perfect. It really, really is. But, you know, you spend all this time stitching that stuff, right? I'm really good at framing. I've really got that down pat. I have framed a lot of stuff that I have in my office and in my bedroom. So there is the size piece of the chipboard. Now what I'm going to do is I have two pieces of scrapbook paper picked out that I want to use. Uh, I always put a similar colored cardstock to my fabric on the chipboard. So it doesn't show like brown through my fabric. This would especially be helpful if you're stitching on a really light colored fabric like white. I would advise putting white cardstock on there so you don't see it. So I am just cutting the paper down to the size of the chipboard square that I cut. And this is another little Fiskars paper cutter that I have that's just for cutting regular paper. Absolutely love this too. Fiskars is a really good brand. I have a bunch of their stuff. Now I'm going to run that piece of cardstock through my sticker maker. This is my Xyron Creative Station. I got this again on Amazon. I want to say it was 60 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. It's so quick and easy and it puts adhesive on the back of it. And I tried to keep everything in the frame. My table isn't so huge that I can just move all around the table. I had to move everything towards me or away from me. So there is a thin film on the front and then you just peel off the back and there is adhesive all on the back of that. And what's nice is it puts adhesive exactly all the way around all the edges. So now I'm just sticking that on there. And now comes the most tedious part besides bow making, getting the fabric on there. So I didn't realize, that, realize, realize this until a little later, but I didn't cut that fourth side and I don't know how or why, but I do eventually cut it. So I am going to put double-sided sticky tape. It's called stitchery tape on the back of this because this is what I'm going to stick the fabric to when I fold it to the back of the piece. So, like I said, I'm going to experiment next time with cutting the fabric a little bit shorter on each side because the less fabric you have on the back, the less bulky it's all going to be. I do like putting fabric around this chipboard and doing it that way versus finishing the piece flat because it's hard to... Not, I can get the corners perfect pretty much with doing it this way. When I did my first pieces and I finished them flat, it will fray and I, I couldn't, I didn't get it perfect. So that was a learning lesson. So because this tape does not completely cover the back, you will see I will cut two of these, peel off the top layer because there's, remember it's double-sided. I will peel off that top layer and then I will stick another piece of tape in the middle so the entire back is covered. I was very fortunate to have off work today so I could film this because essentially between this and the voiceover, two hours. <laughs> so I, I hope you guys can get a lot out of this only because it's probably going to be the last time I do a finishing video for this type of finish. I have other finishing videos on my channel just because this is so time consuming to do it, but someone had requested it and I've had a bunch of questions on how I do this. So here you go. And yeah, I had a lot of cleanup at the end. I had a lot of like scrap trash and stuff at the end of this. So now I play hell a little bit. It takes me a minute to get this fabric wrapped around the back because I want it nearly as perfect as I can get it, right? 
It takes me a little bit of time as you're going to see. I attach it and I always fold the corners in first because I miter the corners. I usually pull the corners pretty tight. I didn't this time. But you'll see, I wind up peeling this up and redoing it like two more times. What's nice about this stitchery tape is that you can pull it up if you're not completely sure. Unlike hot glue where you saw what I did last time when I did the Wicked Before Coffee. Yeah, so... Yeah, I wind up pulling this up. You're going to see it. Because I, I look at the front and I'm like, it's not matching up right. See how it's almost perfect. Like, it wasn't too bad. And you can't really move it around too, too much. You have to peel it off and do it again. So, like I said, I wind up doing that. And like I said, I don't try, I don't tout myself as being an expert in finishing. I learn, I've watched so many YouTube videos on different things and I'm learning. I think I've done a really pretty good job with what I've done so far with these little smalls. And even when I stitch, there's a Halloween piece that I want to stitch. See how I wind up pulling it up? There's a Halloween piece that I want to stitch by Primrose Cottage Stitches that is a much bigger piece, but they do the same thing. Like they buy a frame, but they will, I am so sorry if you guys heard that notification. I should have put my phone on airplane mode. Let me see if I can do that. I did. So you won't hear any more notifications, but, um, they actually buy a frame, but then they do like the mat board and all of that with bows and everything. And I really love how they did it. So I'm going to attempt that when I stitch that. So it's going to be, you know, wrapping fabric around a much bigger piece of chipboard. The pieces that I get from Amazon are 12 by 12, plenty big. But yeah, I feel like I... I undo it one more time and this is where I wind up cutting that one side of the fabric because I'm like, why is there so much fabric on that side? Because I must not have gone all the way around and did it. And I'm cussing. See, I turned the volume down on the original video. I'm just like, really? Like, why is this not matching up? Because I didn't do it correctly. But yeah, I have rotary cutters and I have all kinds of, I mean, over the years I've amassed that for finishing stuff myself and for scrapbooking and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, see, I look right here and I'm like, I don't know if this is where I cut the fabric. I think I notice. See, on that side is where there was a lot more fabric, and I'm like, what the hell? No, I, this, I, I don't take it off yet. Now, obviously, I could have cut all of this out where it's a much shorter video. I feel like I like to leave my mistakes in because it's real life. And there are some people that have watched my tutorials or my videos and have criticized me saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe you should have thought this through, blah, blah, blah. Just move on. Just watch something else then. I typically admire the mistakes in a video because it shows how it, what can really happen. Like I said, this took me 50 minutes to do. So, and this is a pretty small piece. In the end though, it turned out fantabulous. So I'm peeling it off. What's this? The fourth time now? The third time? I think this is the last time I finally figure out that there's too much fabric on that one side. Yeah, I'm going to put that to the side. And I'm like, Danielle, what are you doing? <laughs>
Yeah, I don't know what I did. I, I think I just forgot to go on that side of it and cut it. And now I'm looking around for the rotary cutter because literally if you saw that entire table, there is stuff literally everywhere. Oh my God. But yeah, you also have to remember that I was trying to make sure I was in frame while doing this. You know, some of these steps I would have done sitting down under other circumstances, especially the mitering. Like when I get to the point where I miter the fabric, which you're getting ready to see, I come in and I sit down in my chair and I do it. I don't stand up and do it like I did here. So after the first corner... I think I'm going to cut out me doing all the other ones because it's the same process. But I'll let you, I'll, I'll show you the first corner that I do. So finally, it is getting on there properly. It takes a minute. It sometimes takes a minute. There we go. That looks pretty good, right? So I use to miter the corners. I use just my regular uh, tapestry needle and a DMC color that is similar to the fabric. Um, this is DMC 762, which is a light gray. And I use two strands and I do the loop method because it allows me to anchor the thread when I start by doing the loop method. So I'm pulling a strand out and like I said, normally I would be sitting down in my stitching chair doing this part because this truly is the most tedious part of the whole thing. The rest of it comes together pretty quickly once I get this mitering done. That's why I said I'm going to cut this video down a little bit once I get this first corner done and I've done a separate video. So I start at the bottom. And basically, it's like a whip stitch. You'll see, because what happens is, and I don't know why I'm having so much trouble getting the thread in there. What happens is when I go through, every time I go through and pull the thread up, I pull it as tight as I can. Not to distort or rip the fabric, but you want a tight seam. That's the whole point of mitering the corner is that you're pulling that fabric together so it's a tight point in the top. And like I said, the less fabric you have, the tighter and more pointy it's going to be. Different people have different methods, like Fat Quarter Shop, when they did theirs, they don't miter the corners like this. They just glue it. I've tried that. I, I can't get as tight of a corner as I do when I stitch it like this. This really, for me, is the best method. It's the most time consuming method, but it is absolutely the most best method to do it by far, where I can get the tightest, neatest corner. My last finish, I had mitered the corners on it. The um, Halloween basket. This, this piece is called Halloween quilt, I think, because it definitely looks like a quilt for sure. And the thread came out of my needle, which don't you love that when that happens? And somehow the thread, I must have been pulling it unevenly because it was uneven and I, then I cut it to try to make it even. And as you get up to the very corner this is where I really, really try to take my time because this corner is the most important when you're up there to really make sure you get in those folds of fabric to get the tightest corner that you do. And what I will try to do is I will come in from like, not the other side, but like the top of it. You'll see me do it because I run the thread through one last time. See how I did that? I came up that way. And then I'll run it through to end off the thread. 
but that is how I miter the corners. And I'm pretty sure, like I said, I have a video separately on my channel also just showing the mitering. And again, it's the most time consuming part of this. And I'm, I think I'm, I'm exasperated. I'm a little frustrated because I was like, where are the scissors to cut this? So yeah, I'm going to do the other three corners and I'm going to cut that out of this video and we're going to come back and I'm going to have all of the corners done. Okay, that literally cut out like almost 10 minutes of the video. 10 minutes that you guys didn't need to see. So you can see how nice and straight and crisp I got those corners. Did a pretty good job on that. And as you do that more and more, so I'm going to put that to the side. As you do that more and more, you get better. Now it's time to start a mass of getting the rest of it together. So this is something I bought at Michael's. And my plan is I had already pre-cut the sticky board. That's the sticky board that I use. I got it from Amazon. But I'd already pre-cut that. So now I'm going to, that's the bottom scrapbook paper that I'm going to use. So now I'm going to cut that to size. And I always cut just like a little bit off just to make it easier to handle because scrapbook paper comes in 12 by 12. And my favorite scrapbook paper I get is from scrapbook.com. They have the largest selection. A lot of times the paper's on sale and they ship pretty quickly. And I've never had any paper come damaged. They always ship it completely flat. They do a really, really good job. So it comes perfectly packaged. Like I said, I've never had an issue. And they have a fantastic selection of paper for every single holiday you can think of. So yeah, I'm just going all around the edge, matching this up. And I really like, I bought a lot of scrapbook paper that's Halloween themed a little while ago. So I have a whole, whole lot. It literally, I remember I posted on one of my Facebook groups and someone said, where do you get your mats? And I'm like, ah, oh, it's not mats, it's scrapbook paper. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit deceiving, I guess, when you look at it. So now I'm going to run this through my sticker maker also. That sticker maker is just so handy and useful. And I'm going to stick this piece of paper on the opposite side of where the adhesive is because I'm using I'm going to use the adhesive side to stick down into the frame. You'll see that at the end. It's almost like I'm making a sandwich with all of my things. The paper, the paper, the fabric, and then I just put it all in the frame. And I don't know why I never thought about doing it that way before with the frame. The first time I saw that was on Fat Quarter Shop's video, and I was like, that is so brilliant. Why did I not think of that? So now it's time to layer another piece on there. I'm going to layer a black piece of dotted paper that I'm going to cut with the decorative rotary cutter to give it a decorative edge. Now, I know that when you do that, you should like go all around the edge and make sure all the edges are like symmetrical. Yeah, I don't give a fucking shit about that. <laughs> um, I try not to cuss in these videos and these finishing ones. But um, yeah, I really could care less that if they're perfectly neat. Like when someone is looking at it on your wall, they're not sitting there, you know, mine is my husband, of course, sitting there picking apart every little thing that you didn't do. But yeah, I got done the, the stitching on this one. It only took me like two days. I did a lot of stitching yesterday. I watched three movies yesterday. I will talk about that in my regular update. But yeah, so I'm cutting the paper. I'll cut two edges and then I'll like match it up and see where else I need to cut. It's When I cut the paper and everything, it's not an exact science. I eyeball a whole lot of it. I'm okay with that. I try to make this as least, the path of least resistance for doing this. 
Like I said, once I can get past mitering the corners, the rest of it's usually a piece of cake. Minus when I get to the bow. Minus when I get to the bow. I, yeah, next time I'm just really going to have to take my time in making a bow. And I probably need to give myself some grace about it because it's, I got frustrated at the end. But then remembered I had a bow that someone had made. And I was like, ooh, I can use that. So I'm matching it up to make sure. And you can see here, I also, I had turned my overhead light on so you guys can really, really see. And if you don't think my view is close enough, I apologize for that. I didn't want to get too close down because, again, it's not as easy as you think it is to stay in the viewfinder while doing all of this. So I got one more side to cut. And yeah, I absolutely love this book. I've already kitted up the very next one. The next one is called Which Way? And the finishing that they do for it, they actually finished it on what looks like a cutting board. And I actually bought one of those from um, a store on Etsy. I forget who it's called. It took, it's taking like a month to ship and they tell you that up front, which is fine. So it's gonna take me a minute to finish that one. But the some of the next ones coming up, I really like, and they're going to be a lot of fun to stitch. And they're going to be some different colors. I've stitched so much 3853 and 310. Literally, I've stitched so much of it. So now I'm running the black paper through the Zyron Creative Station. Like I said, I love that thing. That was one of the best investments that I made. And I learned a little while ago that you can buy the Zyron Creative Station cartridges right from their own website. I was trying to do it through Amazon and it was proving difficult. And it's the same price. Like you're not saving any money by buying it on Amazon. Now you will see me here run my finger along the edge. There is a tiny bit of adhesive that gets on there. You can rub it off. Like it'll it's rubbing right off. You can see me just brushing it away. But it's coming together. It comes together very, very nicely. And now it's time to stick the fabric piece. So I'm gonna put again the stitchery tape on the back of the fabric piece. And just taking care again, I'll put two pieces down and I will peel the backs of those up so then I can put that third piece in the center so the back is completely covered. Remember, this tape is made for framing. It's made for framing fabric, needlework fabric. So it is absolutely perfect to stick down onto onto paper too it, it works just fabulously for sure absolutely love it and a roll of it i mean it lasts quite a while a roll of it's like 20 bucks i think 15 dollars something like that i had i will link it i got mine from one two three stitch But yeah, like I said, I will peel the backs and you got to be careful. You got to make sure you can see I'm trying to like flick it with my fingernail. Got to make sure that bottom layer is on the fabric before you peel off the backing. Because there are many times where I didn't have it quite stuck down enough and I would peel up the whole thing. So it just takes some, you got to take your time. When you do this kind of finishing, you can't be rushed to do it. And this is probably why I admire people like Starry Night Studios, Alyssa, and I, Ivana, the Twisted Stitcher, who do this kind of stuff for a living. Because I feel like 
I would get so tired, you know, of doing it. Alyssa's work is impeccable, and so is Vana's. Vana's finished, right when she first got started, I had her finish something for me. But man, she is like, she is the epitome of finishing. I mean, she has an article in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine every month that shows you how to finish stuff. She's fantastic. I mean, I knew her back in the blogging days before YouTube was even a thing for cross stitchers. She's one of the people I think I admire most in like in this whole world. Just how she, her faith, how she behaves with her family, how she is as a person. I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful person. Okay, so finally it is time to stick this down to the scrapbook paper. And what I do, <clears throat> trying to find what... There we go. Matching it up. And then I will press, press, press. Press it down. Sometimes too, I mean, this is tape and not glue. Sometimes I will even put some heavy books on it and let it sit there to really get... I need to be much more conscious because I'm looking at my piece now while doing this voiceover. I need to be more conscious of making sure that tape is on the edges. And that's too where having as little fabric as you can on the back will really help you to adhere it neatly and cleanly on there. So now it's ready to go in the frame. We are almost done here. So I'm gonna peel the back off. Remember, this is the um, sticky board. So I'm gonna peel the the protective paper off of this and then just stick it into the frame. Now, when you actually order a frame though, you need to make sure you order like foam core because you're gonna need something to stick it to. <laughs> you know, they had a trick or treat little sign. So this is the ribbon I had originally picked out, but once I got it in there and I saw that I was like, mm, nah. I'm like, I don't think that's the right color. And I have a couple different ribbons. So you're gonna see me pull out a couple different ones and try to figure this out. I like that ribbon, but then I'm like, mm, nah. And that's how, like, I watched someone make a video. They literally made the bow just from one, like, piece of ribbon. I was like, mm. And I'm like, nah. So I'm looking because, like I said, I only have, like, five or six different ones. I love that ribbon. I actually made a bow with that after this video. I filmed this and it turned out okay. I really have to find something to use that ribbon on. I love that ribbon. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to use this one. I think it was a little bit big for the project. You have to realize when you go to make a bow, you, you, you know, you, you got to think about how big your piece actually is. So I'm going to pull out a piece of the floral wire that I got at Michael's yesterday and tie it around the center to actually form the bow. And the floral wire is not thick. It's pretty thin and it will work. I just need more practice at it. I know for the bow that I made for the trick or treat small that I did, I just wrapped thread around the middle of the bow. Alyssa's bows from Starry Night Studios, fabulous. She's so good at making them. Because she makes them, if you order one of her ornament backings, the ornament blanks, um, it includes a ribbon. I mean, it includes a bow on it. So yeah, I'm trying this floral wire for the first time. I've never used it. And I mean, I have the right idea of how to form a bow, 
like I said, I just need more practice at it because I wind up cutting these tails on here to shreds and then I wind up, like I said, remembering that I have another bow. So I'm going to pause this because I'm not going to sit there and let you guys watch me struggle with this. Okay, so you can see I just like really did a number on that bow. Pulled out a bow I had made, which actually winds up looking really, really good. And it's already made. Now, I use Gorilla Super Glue to glue the bow onto the frame. Yep, that's what I use. I don't use hot glue. I don't use tacky glue. I have this applicator for the super glue and it works fantastic. You don't need very much. You just squeeze the button and it comes out. And you're going to see that's also how I glue the button in the middle onto the bow as I use super glue. So I just hold it for a couple seconds. And the bow just turned out so perfect. Like, I am really tempted. I even did a search on... Um, I did a search to try to see if I could buy pre-made bows because I'm almost to the point where I want to hire somebody to just make them because send you a bunch of ribbon and make them because I just almost don't even want to do it. <laughs> so I had originally picked out a gray star button because the fabric is gray, but then I was like, that didn't look right. So I wind up going with an orange one. You will see. I think I'm trying to find the buttons. So I'm going to need to do my, my exit here soon. Okay, there we go. I'm finding the button. I have a whole bunch. I bought a whole bunch on Etsy. It's different colors. So I, yep, I use an orange one. And put the super glue on it. Glue it down. Okay, guys, that's about it. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I hope this video helped you somewhat. Didn't it turn out so good? And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.